So we're going to learn a little more about the periodic table. This is a postage stamp honoring uh, Dmitry Mendeleev, and he is given credit as being the father of the modern periodic table. He proposed the periodic law, which states that elements, when arranged in order of increasing relative mass, have certain sets of properties that reoccur periodically. So this is how I imagine him doing this. He, at that point, they, they knew of a bunch of the elements, not all of the ones that we know about today, but they knew of a bunch of them. And they knew of their properties, but they were trying to, you know, he's like, okay, let's, let's arrange these in some way. Alphabetical's not so useful. Let's arrange them in some way that's going to make some sense. And so I can imagine him taking, like, index cards and putting the element names and some of their properties, like their densities and how they react with oxygen and things on cards and their masses and then trying to figure out what pattern is there in here. And he's going along, you know, and he's looking at the periodic table and he's noticing, well, you know, chlorine and bromine have some some characteristics in common. And sodium, sodium and lithium and potassium all have some characteristics in common. And so what he noticed was he was arranging them by atomic mass, and if he put them in order of mass, that periodically, as you go through, periodically you'll have these properties that reoccur. So when he arranged them this way, then he found that each of the columns had some characteristics in common with each other. Okay, and so here's a picture of a modern periodic table. And this one is color-coded. All of the elements that have kind of a light yellow color are metals. And so we see that most of the elements are metals. All of these guys are considered metals. And the green ones are non-metals. And then there's hydrogen over here. We're going to find out that hydrogen is like the baby brother of the element family. He's an exception to everything. He gets away with stuff that the other elements would not get away with. Everybody else is in their groups, and he's off by himself. Okay, and then in between, we have the metalloids, or the semi-metals. And they have properties that are kind of in between. So on, on most periodic tables, this one up here on the board as well, you see this um, stair-step line. You see that dark line? So that even if the periodic table is not color-coded, that line is a dividing line between metals and nonmetals. And right along that line is where the uh, semi-metals are. So if we look right here, what color would be good? Maybe red. So right in here, we have this line, and that will be shown on the periodic table I give you f when you take exams. The elements on each side of that are, are the, the, oops, are the semi-metals. So these guys, um, this guy down here, polonium, is not a semi-metal. Uh, he's also not very common. We're not going to run into him very often. The only important exception to that is aluminum. Is aluminum a metal? Yeah. You have cookie sheets in your kitchen that are made out of aluminum metal. There's aluminum metal in your car, most likely. We all have experienced aluminum. If you ever touched a soda can, you've held aluminum. It's a metal. <clears throat> so you should be able to remember that this one is, ex is an exception to that. But other, there's that stair-step line. The ones touching it except for aluminum are going to be the semi-metals. And then from the periodic table, you should be able to identify if an element is a metal or a non-metal. So let's just say do bromine. You're probably not familiar with bromine. Metal or non-metal. Well, so you're on a test, you're taking a test, and what happens as soon as you start reading the questions? Your mind kind of goes blank, right? You forget everything. So now we have to reason stuff out. 
so you say to yourself, well, I know that line divides it. How do I decide which side of the line is metals and which is not metals? Pick something you know about. How about oxygen? Is oxygen a metal? No, it's a gas that we breathe. So that side must be the nonmetals. And all the guys on that side are the nonmetals. And so you say, oh, well, bromine's on the same side of the line as oxygen. Bromine is a nonmetal. Over on the other side, you know, elements like copper and iron, you probably recognize as metals. And so that can help you identify, okay, that side is the, the metals. Um, we should be familiar with some of the characteristics of these different groups, the metals and the nonmetals. The metals are going to have similar properties. They're not all identical, but they have similar properties. They're good conductors. They conduct heat and they conduct electricity. They can be pounded into flat sheets. And the, the word for that is malleable. Metals are malleable. They can be made into wires. They have ductility. And they are often shiny. So if you're given a description of an element and asked to say if it's metallic or non-metallic, those are the sorts of things you're looking for. Another thing about metals is that they tend to lose electrons when they make uh, chemical changes. But there's a couple examples down there, iron, magnesium, chromium, sodium. Let's look at patterns of the nonmetals, characteristics. The nonmetals um, are not as consistent as the metals are. All the metals, except for mercury, are solids at room temperature, but the, the nonmetals are all over the place. There's liquids, there's one liquid, and there's solids and gases. Something they are consistent in is their poor conductors. They don't conduct heat well, they don't conduct electricity well either, and they tend to gain electrons. I kind of think is metals and nonmetals as sort of being opposite each other in the same way that men and women are opposite of each other. I mean, we're all people, but yet there's these different broad characteristics that don't apply to everybody, and yet they're still generally true. In between the metals and the nonmetals are the metalloids. Um, you think about a, you know, in the science fiction, a humanoid robot. Well, a humanoid is like a human, but is not a human. A metalloid is like a metal, but it's not a metal. Um, also has the word semi-metal, sometimes called a semi-metal, or a semi-conductor. These have properties that are in between metals and nonmetals. So semiconductors, these are real important in computers. Um, because of their intermediate electrical conductivity, they're really, really useful for electronic devices. Silicon is, is a semi-metal, um, and the Silicon Valley is named after it. It's very, very important in computer chips. Arsenic is another one, germanium. There are not as many uh, metalloids as there are metals and nonmetals. So let's look at these and classify each as a metal or a nonmetal or a, semi, a metalloid. I, I really like the word metalloid better, but sulfur, nonmetal. How about chlorine, nonmetal? How about Ti, titanium? That's a metal. How about remember what Sb is? That's antimony. That's a metalloid. He's right here, touching the line. So we have other patterns in the periodic table. Um, we identify different groups as uh, in different sections. We have the main group elements, and they're shaded in yellow here. Those are the parts of the periodic table that kind of stick up on the sides. And then the transition elements are these guys in the middle that it looks like it's sunk down. It looks like there's a couple rows missing. There's a reason behind that. But those are the transition metals. They're kind of making the transition from this main group to that main group. 
So you should understand, know those names of the parts of the periodic table. The main group elements as opposed to the transition elements. Some of these um, groups, the columns in the periodic table are called groups. Columns are groups. Some of them have special names. They're also called families. And just like a family has a name, these groups have names too. So we have the alkali metals over here. <coughs> and next to them are the alkaline earth metals. Over here we have the halogens and the noble gases. These groups are numbered. Um, there's two kinds of numberings. There's the ones on this periodic table, like 1A, 2A, 3A, and then sometimes they're just numbered continuously, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so we end up with, over here, we end up with 13. We end up with 13, 14, 15. I don't like those numbers. I like the A numbers. Do you see a relationship, though, between the 13? and 3a, 14 and 4a. Okay, if you just knock the 1 off of that number on the top, it's the same as the number on the bottom. Those numbers are just useful for predicting some things, and we'll get to those later. Um, these guys down here are called the, the lanthanides and the actinides, and I'm not going to get too hung up on those. Those guys are weird, and we don't use them very much. But there they are at the bottom of the periodic table. Um, well, here's a question. Why are they at the bottom of the periodic table? Well, they were found later. Um, let's look at the numbering here. Okay, so here we've got um, 55, 56, 57, and it jumps to 72. And there's a little gap there. This guy is 58. These guys really belong up here in this gap. We should cut the periodic table spread it apart, and put all of these guys in there. That would make the periodic table very long. And practically, it's not going to fit on a screen or a piece of paper very well. And we don't use those guys very much. Most of them are radioactive and very unstable, and we just don't use them very much. So we stick them at the bottom of the periodic table, just kind of out of the way. But the, So if you would... You know, if you had a piece of paper, if you had this printed on paper, you could cut the paper right along here, cut this out, and stick it in here. Because this goes 57, there's 58, and it goes in order up to 71, and then jumps over here to 72. So that's where those guys belong. Um, real quick overview of these guys. Um, alkali metals, these are the group 1A or group 1. And you notice hydrogen is missing from that. Hydrogen is at the top here. But hydrogen, is hydrogen a metal? No, hydrogen's a nonmetal. So even though he's sitting over there in the periodic table, he's not really part of the alkali metals. These guys have common characteristics. One of them is that they react very vigorously. They're very, very reactive. You throw a small piece of sodium into a sink full of water and it will explode. And they're just crazy reactive. Next group over is the alkaline earth metals. These are also very reactive. This picture is showing uh, calcium in water. Most metals don't react with water, thankfully. Not fast like that. I mean, if, if your car was made out of calcium, one rainstorm, one car wash, and it would just fizzle away. It's not real useful for structural things. Over on the other side, we have the halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and acetine. And these guys vary. Um, fluorine, and, fluorine and chlorine are gases. Bromine is a liquid. Iodine and acetine are solids at room temperature. But they also have very common characteristics and chemical properties. And then we have the noble gases. Um, the noble gases don't react much with anything. They're very unreactive. 
I think of them as being like the nobles in Europe, the kings and the queens and the dukes and the duchesses. They don't interact with the common people, right? They kind of keep to themselves. So the noble gases, they're just really self-satisfied and they don't need to interact with the rest of us common people. They don't interact much with the other elements. They're all gases at room temperature. And a neon sign actually does have the gas neon in it. And it, it gives that particular orange glow. So which group or family, group and family are just two different names for a column in the periodic table. Which, which families do these guys belong to? Lithium. Alkali metals. Let's get the right color here. That's an alkali metal. How about boron? Well, we don't have a name for its column, so someone said semi-metal. Yeah, semi-metal or metalloid. How about iodine? Iodine's over here. Remember that name? It starts with an H. Halogen. Iodine is a halogen. That whole row, that group 7A, 17, those are halogens. Argon. Argon's a noble gas. So those sorts of questions you should be able to answer. Okay. The main group, there's main group, transition elements, there's metals, nonmetals, metalloids, and then there's alkali metals, alkaline earth metals, halogens and noble gases. And those parts of the periodic table you should you should know.